Now that we've had a chance to look at how to navigate within RealFlow, we'll start to look at some of the tools and some of the functions that are available within the software itself. So let's go ahead and take a look at where we left off. And one thing to, that you really need to keep in mind about RealFlow is that RealFlow is meant to work in conjunction with other softwares, things like uh, 3D Studio Max or XSI or Maya or really just about any software you use. So as a result of that, RealFlow does not have a lot of the traditional tools that you would expect in a 3D package. For example, you really have no modeling tools to speak of and you also don't have any rendering capabilities. So all of these tools that we have available to us all have directly um, to do with dynamics and particle simulations. That's really all that RealFlow is meant to do is just particle simulations and dynamics. So one thing to keep in mind since this is meant to work with other pieces of software is within RealFlow you need to be able to choose which piece of software you're going to be going back to for your rendering purposes whether you want to use Lightwave or Studio Max XSI you actually have quite a few to choose from now this does become important because you can see looking at Softimaj XSI if I have that chosen if you take a look at my axis orientation down in this lower left hand corner you can see that my Y axis is pointing up here within RealFlow now if I were to change this to something like Studio Max you can see now the Z axis is pointing up and this is how the the uh, orientation of 3D Studio Max um, is within that piece of software so this is to ensure that the particles that you actually export out of RealFlow will actually come into Studio Max oriented correctly so again between a lot of these different softwares the orientation changes slightly between each one so it's important to choose the software that you're going to be going back to if you really want these particles to be oriented correctly whenever you come back in so let's go ahead and talk now about some of these different uh, manipulation tools that we have available to us so I'm going to go ahead and real quickly just drop a emitter so we can have something to work with and we'll talk about a lot of these different emitters here in just a minute right now I really just want to use this as an example to talk about some of these different tools so right now by default is this sort of an arrow tool and that's just the selection tool and pretty straightforward you can use that to just select a, a particular object within your scene however with this selection tool you really can't make any adjustments it's strictly for selecting so you also have the move tool which will let you pick this up and move it around within a certain axis if you be, if you're able to grab this uh, right down here in this little blue uh, corner of this cube that will let you sort of give you a free movement so you can pick it up and move it wherever okay you also have your rotate tool pretty straightforward you can pick an axis and rotate it along this axis okay now unlike with the uh, move tool you really don't have a free rotate so unfortunately you're pretty much limited to using these three axes and you also have your scale tool which will let you scale in a certain axis okay, so you can scale this out and again if you wanted to be able to uh, do more of a uniform scale you could grab this little blue box or this little blue corner of the cube and do sort of a, uh, a uh, Sort of a con uh, constraint scale now also just like within your uh, typical 3d modeling packages if uh, you select this and expand the node selection you also can just type in specific values so if I wanted to go ahead and set all of these back to zero set the scale back to one so you can also manually type in all of your values just like your uh, traditional 3d packages like Maya or Softimage Okay, another really easy way that you have to be able to select different objects within your scene is to use this little pull down menu so I'm going to go ahead and select this and just move it over to the side okay, and just to change things up I'm going to add just one more emitter just so we can have something to choose between now being able to select these different emitters if you just have two objects isn't really such a big deal 
but as your scenes start to become more complicated and you start to have uh, some more overlying uh, pieces of geometry, sometimes this can be a little bit tricky. So a really neat feature within RealFlow is this little pull-down menu. So within underneath this node list, you have circle one and square one. These are my two emitters. So as you start to add more objects in your scene, you'll start to see more and more things in this list. So if I wanted to be able to select my circle emitter, just within this pull-down menu, you can just select circle one, and now it's gone ahead and selected it for you. So very neat feature to have, and is actually, like I said, really, really useful to have whenever you start to get more complex scenes with overlaying particles and overlaying meshes. Um, this is really, really a lifesaver to have. So in the next lesson, we'll start to talk about some of the actual um, dynamic features of RealFlow.